Hi, I'm Jimmy Levine from Levine & Sons Plumbing, Heating & Cooling, Detroit, Michigan. I'm a third generation master plumber. Today we're going to talk about the most common type of toilet repairs. First we want to start with the sequence operation for a toilet. Strip the lever, flapper comes up, water leaves the tank, goes into the bowl, down into the drain system. The float's going to rise here and it's going to shut the water off about a quarter inch below the flush valve. Fluid level control valve shut the water off and the flapper is sealing water into the tank. When you trip the lever on the toilet, the chain's gonna rise, the flapper's gonna come up, the water's gonna evacuate from the tank, go into the bowl, the flapper's gonna go back down and seal the water in the tank. Now if there was a phantom flush occurring, meaning Let's say you're laying in bed at night and all of a sudden the toilet turns on for two seconds and shuts off. It's losing water from the flapper. Now if you inspect a flapper that's worn, it's not going to be smooth and it isn't going to seal on the flush valve properly. Here's a tip for preserving the life of the rubber flapper in the toilet. Do not put the blue deodorant blocks in the toilet tank that makes the water smell pretty and have that pretty blue turquoise Caribbean um, visual. It will decompose this rubber flapper and cause it not to seal water in the tank as it should. Another reason the toilet would need to be rebuilt would be the fluid level control valve. The fluid level control valve is going to drop and it's going to start filling water into the tank and into the bowl. Water level is going to rise, the float is going to come up and it's going to shut the water off at the proper mark. As I said earlier, we want the water to shut off, not to the top of the flush valve, but about a quarter inch below it. We never want it to get to the point where it's gonna run over the flush valve. This is a running toilet. That's costly, it's a waste of water, and it's noisy, and you can't sleep at night, and it's aggravating. A simple adjustment would be, on most fluid level control valves, there's a screw where you can adjust the water level down so it can shut off. As the washer gets worn and the chlorine starts eating away the washer, it may need an adjustment or you would change the whole fluid level control valve. Here are the five tools one would need to do a minor rebuild on a toilet. Four-way screwdriver where you'll have a straight side and a Phillips side, a channel locks, a needle nose pliers, a mini adjustable crescent wrench and a side cutter. The three parts necessary to perform the minor rebuild on the toilet are the new fluid level control valve, a rubber flapper, and a new supply line. If a toilet's just phantom flushing and you know you had a newer fluid level control valve and for some reason you didn't change the flapper, you could do a flapper only, but if you're taking the time to go to the store to buy the parts and take the time to rebuild the toilet, spend the extra money, change the fluid level control valve and the flapper. Some other items one would need to do a rebuild on the toilet would be two terry cloth towels and a two and a half gallon bucket or smaller. Okay, the first step to performing the minor rebuild would be to shut the water off. Normally by the left on the floor, there's a shut off valve. This is a ball style. We're going to turn it to the right. Next, we're going to evacuate the water from the tank. We're going to trip the lever and hold it up. So most of the water, or all the water that could possibly be evacuated from the tank is evacuated. We're going to remove the flapper assembly. Sometimes you need a needle nose pliers. Just wrap it in a piece of toilet paper and we can discard it in our bucket. Next, we're going to disconnect the supply line from the emergency water shutoff valve. Take our adjustable crescent wrench and we're going to put it on the 3 8 nut and we're going to turn it counterclockwise. So it's loose, take the channel locks and we're removing the nut that attaches to the bottom of the fluid level control valve right now. And we 
we drain the water out and we wipe the floor. We want to keep a clean, neat work area. We have to remember that there's still water in the tank. So when we unscrew the nut for the existing fluid level valve from the bottom, we're going to unscrew it. This seal is holding the water. I'm going to maintain pressure. And if I lift this out, I'm going to have a bucket to stick right under my hole. If it's small enough to fit directly underneath that hole, in this case it won't. So I'm going to have a rag that I'm going to put directly underneath on, on the, the bottom side of the china. When I pull this out, the rag's going to seal the water. I'm going to have my new fluid level valve ready to go. I'm going to put it in the hole, put pressure so this rubber seal compresses to hold the water in the tank. I'm going to quickly tighten my nut. That's going to keep the water down to a minimum spillage on the floor and I also have another towel on the floor to catch any water that might escape. I'm going to take my crescent wrench and I'm going to unscrew this bottom nut while applying pressure onto the top of the fluid level control valve and it's key to have your new fluid level valve and nut ready to go. This is crunch time right here. I have my rag. I'm putting it under. And I pull out the fluid level valve. I'm going to stick the new one in. And I have my new nut. I'm applying pressure. Little water's coming out of the bottom, but I'm managing it. And now I'm tightening the nut that's going to permanently smush my rubber seal to hold the water in the tank. We're going to take the old fluid level valve, let the water drain, put it in our bucket, we're going to wipe the floor up. We want to keep a nice, neat, clean work area. Okay, and here's our new fluid level control valve. It's set up and now we have to tweak the installation or do final adjustments. We're going to take the supply line, we're going to cut it with our side cutters. And on this model, we have a little insert we're going to put in. And we clip this to the fluid level valve. So right now we have this set up pretty good. We're going to take our flapper assembly. That, remember, is going to seal water into the tank. There's two little ears on the side of the flush valve that we hook these little tabs on flapper is hooked onto the flush valve. Both ears are caught and it seems to be seating properly. Now we have our trip lever. We're going to attach this chain on the clip. We want to put the clip on first and with the chain we want it taut. We want about one break of chain link. Just a little like this. Just so when you trip the lever it has enough slop for the flapper to seat on the flush valve, yet you don't want to have to flip the lever all the way up because then it might not rise as high as it should. If it's too tight, the flapper's not going to seal 100% on the flush valve. So we want to connect the chain to the clip. And as you can see here, we have just a little bit of play till it trips. We know it's going to open all the way and then it's going to seat all by itself. We're going to take our needle nose pliers. We want to get rid of this excess slop. Bend out one of these metal links. Now I got two extra links just in case I need to tweak my adjustment. Okay, we're going to connect our new supply line to the bottom of the fluid level control valve that we put in. I'm checking the nut to make sure that there's no leakage. It seems fine. We're connecting the bottom nut just by hand. I'm going to get it hand tight first. I'm going to connect the 3-8 connection to the emergency shutoff valve on the other end of the supply line. You've got to be a contortionist sometimes to make everything fit. Right now our new fluid level control valve is set in place. Our flapper is set. Chain link is adjusted. Now we can turn the water on. We have our new supply line installed. 
Gonna reach down to the emergency water shutoff and turn the water on. And we can get our perfect adjustment by let, screwing the screw in or screwing the screw out. Perfect, right on the water line. Let's test flush it, trip the lever, flapper comes up. Flapper seats, now the tank's gonna fill. Ah, perfect. Now that we've successfully rebuilt this toilet, we have the fluid level valve shutting the water off where it should, the flapper sealing the water in the tank. You just wanna take a minute to double check and make sure none of the connections underneath the toilet are leaking. You don't want to surprise an hour or two later. Just want to make sure it's dry. The connection where the supply line meets the, the um, emergency water shutoff and the bottom shank of that fluid level valve. That's the two places where it can leak. Make sure that's nice and dry. Once it is and you've test flushed it, you can put the lid on and go about business.